Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be episode number 13 of the CNC learning uh, guitar building series that I'm doing where I'm building this guy right here. I call it the E-War Stingray, uh, but it is basically an offset body design. It's going to have a tunematic bridge, a pair of humbuckers in it, a set neck, a uh, one volume, two tones, and a three-way blade switch, and some really cool looking wood. That's zero coating in the inlay and on up the fretboard and the rest of it's black cherry and I got some cool looking veneers going through here and I got some really cool looking stripes uh, going up the back of the neck too. So anyway, I'm really digging the guitar and I'm, I'm enjoying doing it. I'm enjoying doing it on, uh, on these videos too. So uh, in this particular video, we are getting ready to glue the neck into the body and I've got to do a few things before we get that to happen. I want to have that done by the time this video is over with. So a couple things we still need to do is I need to determine uh, the height of this neck. Uh, I want to make sure that the height of that neck is right. And to do that, I'm going to have to set this bridge in place down here on top of the wheels it goes on. So I want this bridge actually drilled in, mounted in place, sitting on top of the wheels so I could run a straight edge across the top of these frets and make sure that they hit exactly on top of these bridge uh, saddle pieces like it's supposed to when the bridge is in its lowest position. So I'm going to have to drill that guy in. We're going to have to do a little layout to get that done. I still want to get my, um, I want to get this hole drilled for my uh, output jack, which is going to go down to the bottom here. I discovered in this design, by the way, I'm not crazy about where it's going to wind up having to go. It's kind of right, it's sort of going to be pointed directly down. I usually like them back here. I think next time I build this guitar, this is the first time I've built this one, I'm going to rearrange these two uh, tone knobs here a little bit so I can get this guy back in this back corner here rather than up here. But for now, I think this will be cool. So, uh, oh, and I still got to do some sanding on this thing too. So now I, we did all the contours and everything in the last video, and I sanded it, just did the rough sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. Now I'm going to want to go ahead and sand this body uh, by hand up to probably 180 before I glue in the neck and then we'll carry on with the rest of the sanding once the neck's glued in. So I think the first thing we'll do on this one is probably drill in that uh, output jack down here. So let me get the camera turned down, we'll get it laid out and get rolling along with that. Okay, so I've got this turned where uh, I can see inside my, uh, my control cavity here. And you know, ideally, like I was saying a second ago, I would love for this thing to come up into here. And, uh, and, you know, and I intended to use this barrel type uh, jack, which is a pretty long thing. I like them because it has just a very minimal thing on the face. And it, uh, you know, and it's got a long thing. You could just, you, you put it in there in a half inch hole and you could thread the little nut on there and it's all done. But boy, it sure does take up a lot of space. Um, the other type, and I just checked and I happen to have one, is this, this is a standard type I've used for a long time. You drill a seven eighths hole for this guy here. And this mounts into a plate like this. I had a black plate in which I could use that here too. And this may be a better fit for what we're doing. Um, I've got myself a, a, a cable a jack, a quarter inch uh, deal here on the cable jack. And that's how it plugs in. So I could use this to determine my length, the exact length I'm going to uh, be at, and how I'm looking down here right now. I think when I get it down here where I want it, I think I'm clearing that potentiometer. But to be absolutely sure, before I go drilling this thing up, I'm going to go ahead and screw this potentiometer in and make sure everything's going to clear. So let me pop this guy in the hole right here. Like so. Now let me hold this guy right here. I think so. I don't know if you can see any of this, what I'm showing right now, but I think if I get that guy right there, I'm going to miss my little uh, screw area here. So I'm going to try to get this guy coming right in, right in through here.
Okay, so I think that came out. Uh, I think that came out really well. I've even got the little uh, screw holes drilled in there too, so that should be set to go, and uh, don't have to mess with that again until after we finish it and clean out the holes. Anyway, so the next thing I think we need to do is go ahead and get this uh, get this bridge uh, bridge post drilled in these guys right here. And I've got a pretty straightforward way of uh, laying out for my bridges and everything, and uh, you know, and it works for me pretty good. So. Uh, let me, uh, let me go ahead and turn this camera down and uh, I'll lay this thing out. We'll get the bridge post drilled in, the bridge set, and uh, take it from there. Okay, so uh, I like to use this uh, tape, this green masking tape, because it just makes it so much easier to see the, see the lines. And we're going to be drawing some, uh, you know, uh, fairly small little... Uh, thin little pencil line and it just might, makes it much easier to want to look at so I'm gonna run a couple of pieces of tape across here just keep it way out of the way and that ought to do it right there so okay now my neck is fully pushed into place so I simply take my straight edge okay with the neck pressed into its pocket all the way, I take my straight edge and I very carefully line it down each edge of the neck. And then I'll run a mark right like so. And I can see I'm just on the outside of my, uh, just on the outside of my uh, drill holes here for the, uh, for the tail piece, just like that. Okay, so those are my two marks, and on this one, I'm like right on that outside of that drill hole there too, so I think I'm laying in there really nicely. Now, I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to mark my 25-inch scale length, so my ruler is going to go all the way. In fact, let me slip that nut in there. If you remember a couple of episodes ago, we uh, made this nut, so I'm going to go ahead and slip the nut into place and push my ruler right up against it. By the way, that is a 0.5 millimeter, half a millimeter pencil. And that's what I've used to make these really, really fine little marks that I want to be super accurate. Let's check that with my, with my square. Nice, 25, okay? So that looks great. Okay, in order to uh, square a line across for my 25-inch uh, scale length, I need to establish my center line on top of this green uh, tape because obviously both these lines are tapered, so I can't use that to square off of. So I'm just going to use my ruler and go off the center line of the body, which is hard to see, but it is right there. And I can see the center line right here, it's about like that. Okay, now let me use my center finding rule just to see if that is good. That's perfect. Okay, that looks great. Okay, so I have a really nice center line. So, I'm now going to uh, take this little square here and establish my square line at 25 inch scale length. And I do my very best to be as absolutely accurate as I can with this stuff to the point where sometimes I will mark it and I'll check it and I won't like it and I'll erase the line and I'll redo it and sometimes I redo it several times. Okay. Now I've got my uh, square line established here at the 25 inch scale length. I've got my two outside neck lines, my center line. I'm gonna use all four of these lines to basically eye this uh, bridge up. I've got the center of these two saddles here, right? And that's gonna line up on the center line. And then it seems like it hits when I'm on the center just outside of these last two, this screw here and that screw there. My other two lines are just outside of that. So. 
I think between the three of those points I'm using, I'm establishing myself pretty well centered here. And of course, we want to rotate this thing down at three degrees this way. This is a little uh, a pointed uh, marking tool that works nice for this sort of thing. And that looks great. Okay, so let me intensify that mark a little bit. Okay, that's the first one. Now we have to rotate this line around to three degrees. Okay, so I had to extend these lines a little bit so I could use my little protractor guy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my uh, angle finder down here. Uh, I'm, I'm lined up on the 90 degrees, right on my 25 inch scale length, and I'm lined up down here at the one pin of the of the uh, bridge. And I'm going to come over and count one, two, three degrees, right there. Okay, this is a three degree angle at that width. Okay, I'm going to drop my little punch in there, get that back on the thing, so that's going to hold that in, rotate that guy around to right, right there. And that should be my bridge placement right there. Three degrees, the uh, high E string is on 25 inch scale length, and it angles back away from the uh, nut at three degrees toward to the uh, low E string. Okay, so um, the little post on these things, they measure, I use my calipers here, and I measure them, and they measure about 6.6 .6 millimeter. So I tried a seven millimeter hole and, uh, and it was just too big. That's this guy right here. Seven millimeters is too big. 6.3 millimeters is a quarter inch. So I tried a quarter inch hole down here and that's just way, way, way too tight. I'd have to absolutely beat the daylights out of that thing to get it in there. And I want it snug, but I don't want to have to beat, the hammer with, uh, beat, beat a hammer against my guitar to get this thing in. And someday it may need to come out. So. Uh, anyway, so I just went up to the hardware store and they happen to have a uh, 1760 fourths uh, bit, which is uh, just under or just over a quarter inch. And it actually, I think it's going to fit nice. The smooth part of the shank here uh, fits re re in really nice and then just grabs the teeth. It begins to grab the knurled part of this. So I'm pretty good with that. I think that's going to wind up being a nice snug fit. Um, I won't drive it all the way down into place for now, but uh, but in the end I'll be able to just tap that in the rest of the way with a hammer. I think it'll hold in there really solidly into the body, and I think we're going to be good. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and get over to my drill press and drill these two guys out. Okay, so I think that came out really well. I don't have the post actually installed in there. I've just got these, uh, these uh, turn deals that the adjustment uh, wheels set in place, and I'm just dropping it in a hole, because all we're really trying to do is find the lowest, uh, the lowest point on this uh, bridge, so we can measure then the height of our, uh, the height of our neck. So <clears throat> the ideal thing to do is to, you want the top of these frets Right when everything's at its lowest point, when the bridge is at its lowest point, the top of these frets to basically plane out with the high point in the center of this bridge right here. Now this bridge is set up on a 12-inch uh, radius, so this the center is the high point, and the the neck is obviously a 12-inch radius too. So what you have to do is you put a straight edge right down the center of the neck, and you eye it across to the center of the bridge. And I have, uh, right now, I have probably a little less than a sixteenth of an inch uh, 
of gap in between the straight edge and the top of the, the uh, saddle pieces. So I'm going to need to bring this neck down about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'll unclip that, uh, I'll unclip the camera in a second and show you, but that's about what I have underneath this uh, fretboard. And oftentimes the fretboard will come out almost, the underside of the fretboard will come out almost flush with the top of the body uh, when doing this. So <clears throat> let me pull that camera off and show you that. And then we're going to sand the back of this guy down a little bit at a time and incrementally we're going to work it down to where that straight edge is just touching there. So let me see if I can get this over here to show you. I'll show you a couple different things. Let me see. So first of all, you can see right here, you can still see a couple layers of veneer up under there. And so I have about a sixteenth of an inch I can go down. And if I put my straight edge up here, I'm going to try to do this as delicately as possible. I don't know if you can see it under there or not, but I have about a sixteenth, probably a little less than a sixteenth of an inch in between my straight edge and the top of the saddle pieces. And that is what we're trying to get. Uh, we're trying to get that straight edge to meet the saddle pieces. So. Uh, what we're going to do, let me stick the camera back over here. I've got a couple of 80 grit uh, pieces of sandpaper. And they're the sticky back type and they're glued down to this piece of granite, which is a very flat surface. I'm going to very uh, carefully, a little at a time, I'm going to take with even pressure and hold this guy on here. Oh, we'll probably have to clamp that down. I think we've got it now. Uh, let me show you first here. You can see right here the underside of the fretboard is flush with the top of the body. And remember we pitched the top of this body to follow that three degrees. And now I'm going to put my straight edge here. And right there you can see that I am just on top of the middle of the saddle pieces. So I think we're really good. I think that's uh, very nice right there. We should get the very low intonation on this guitar. And, uh, and I think that's just right. So I guess we're good to go ahead and glue in this neck. Now I still need to go ahead and cut out this uh, piece of the neck where the, uh, where the pickup's got to go. And I always do this. This is the very last thing I do. And then I put my initials down in there. And then I glue in the neck. So I just simply take my pencil. If I could do it without breaking the lead off. And I, as carefully as I can, go around the bottom of this thing and try to get a mark on it as well as up the sides. Let's see if we can mark this guy here too. Okay. Yeah, I kind of got a line in there. I should be able to go with that. So let me get my square and we're going to clean up these lines a little bit, getting this cut out. Okay, so I'm ready to glue this thing up. I like using this Ultra Cat glue. It's uh, it's a powdered uh, resin glue. It's a catalyzed powder, pre-catalyzed powder resin glue. I love the stuff. 
It's a nice brown color. Add a little bit of hot water to it, mix it up, and glue away. And that is what we're about to do. Hope oh, my battery doesn't run out on my uh, camera. It's getting low. So I think that came out pretty good. I now have a guitar. That thing is all one piece now. I'm, I'm thrilled to death. I think it's looking good. I got a nice height on the neck. I got a good three degree angle on the thing. I got a decent fit. A little bit gappy here on the side. I'm not crazy about that, but we may do something about that uh, before it's all said and done. But anyway, I think that's about it for this video. Uh, uh, we are now one step further along the process here. And I, I'm digging it. I think the guitar is looking great and, and I'm enjoying doing it too. So. Anyway, I hope somebody got a little something out of this video. I uh, appreciate you all sticking around and checking it out. And if you dig this sort of thing, how about you give me a like and a subscribe. Anyway, until next week, hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.